Hello and welcome. I am Arumba. Thank you for joining me. Let's play Reus. Let's take a look at this game. This is a brand new indie game that was released by Abbey Games. This is their debut title. Abbey Games is in the Netherlands. And this game is, uh, I don't know, it's pretty neat. It, um, I had a lot of fun with it already. So let's go through the tutorial together. We'll do game mode, the beginning, era the first. In the beginning, there's only an empty planet. So from the website, this game um, was inspired by games like Populous, Civilization, Black and White, The Binding of Isaac, and uh, I've played most of those games. And this is a this is a fun game. I like the the layout, the design of it. A lot of fun. So let's give it a shot. All right. So introduction. You have awakened from your slumber. You find your surface dry and barren. It is lifeless. Zoom in and zoom out using the mouse. Yes, yes. Use the left mouse button to click and drag. You can also move the camera using the arrow keys, left and right. How fancy. Let's create our giants. First, we start off with the ocean and rock giant. There are four giants total in this game. They kind of cover the different biomes that you could, you can use, like swamp and jungle, desert, that, that kind of thing. So, use your giants. Your goal is to have life roam your surface eternally. And to start, we will turn this dry wasteland into a paradise. All right, so let's start off by selecting a giant. One of the things that I want to comment on right away is that I love how conveniently laid out the key bindings are. Not only can you clearly see what they are, because they're indicated on every button, but it's very intuitive. You can use 1, 2, 3, and 4 to select your giants, and then it's basically a QWERTY setup, which I think is great. So first, um, yeah, let's move our giants. So you can use the right mouse button. So you can set them around and see the little icon where they're going to head toward. They want us to put them on top of each other, so let's do that. Then we can move on. Inquire about the land. You can use the left mouse button to select, uh, to click on a patch of land and view its statistics in the upper right-hand corner of the screen. This is something else I think is fantastic about this tutorial. In less than about a half hour, I was able to get fully up and running, fully understand what was happening and how the game works, and it's because of the fantastic tutorial. It starts off very minimalistic, very little is on the screen, and then they slowly add in information so you aren't overwhelmed by the interface. Very good design. So, you can use the left mouse button to click on a patch of land and view statistics. So we can see there's no natural source. Inquire. Dry wasteland cannot sustain any life. Must be terraformed. Let's use the ocean to create an ocean. So we select our ocean giant. Press Q. Can have him dig an ocean. Nice. Very nice. Now, the planet itself is a little small, but, uh, you know, that's fine. So you have an ocean. Well done. And welcome our third giant, the forest giant. Now, the forest giant is going to help us to create a forest. Kind of coincidental, isn't it? I do like the graphics as well. They're kind of, they're kind of, they're fun. They're very, um, I don't know, they're just, I like them. Your forest requires water from the ocean. So you can see along the bottom that, um, you know, this water, or this land here is wet. This land is still dry. That's what allows us to place that forest. Now it wants us to raise a mountain on dry wasteland to create a desert. Okay, so if I was to raise a mountain, say, over here on the wet, it wouldn't work. Now something I've experimented with a little bit is that you can raise a mountain right next to this and it's not going to destroy this land. So we'll go ahead and do that there and that'll create desert to the left. See that little smile? I think he's smiling. He looks happy. That's a smile, isn't it? It's just his rocky face. Hard to tell. I imagine there to be a smile right there. Oh, a little crazy. All right, yeah. So we got a mountain that separates the forest from the desert. Excellent. Create more habitable land. Use the abilities of all your giants to cover at least half of the in patches of land. All right, that's fine. So we'll send our forest giant over here and have him create some forest. 
Let's send the water giant over here. And something I like to do is kind of try to line it up. So right around there-ish. So we need to take the water giant, and I think it was about there, roughly. Meanwhile, we'll take the land giant further west, or east, I guess. Depends on how you look at it, really. And, uh, oh, well, I've already succeeded. Apparently that's 50%. All right, let's move on. It's very pretty. I do like the music in this game, too. Well done, you've accomplished your goal. You have learned to create oceans, forests, mountains, and deserts. Yes. And that's it. That's the first tutorial. So it's basically kind of the, you know, how to control the, the giants, how to move around the world a bit. And then the next tutorial is going to cover a little bit more detail. We're going to get into the actual, um, you know, civilization type part. Now, if you've ever played black and white, I think this part's pretty neat because basically you can't control civilization directly. You have to do it indirectly. All right, so this is the second era. I have to unpause it first. You recall a time when, you're, when you used your giants to create oceans and forests. You gather all your strength so the ocean giant and forest giant can reawaken. Fancy. All right. Use the forest giant and ocean giant to raise a forest of at least 10 patches. I believe we can oblige. Now, I do feel that it's important to, to I have, you know, most of the features that I've talked about so far, I really enjoy. A couple things, though, I just want to mention, a couple things about the game I, I think could be useful. I would love to see a an option in here to con to change the key bindings. I like the key bindings, but I just feel that in general uh, it's better if if key bindings are adjustable. So that's my only real complaint so far. Use the force giant. Uh, we already done that. Yes. Well done. You sense a change somewhere in a cave. Something small has awakened. Sense a new spark for life. Right. So use the forest giant's fruit plant ability to place some plants in the forest. I'm actually going to build two forests just because I can. And he's already over there. <clears throat> okay, we'll put down some fruit. And now we get more interface. This is what I was mentioning before where it adds more and more to the game as you play. Marsh cliffs settled. Nice. As soon as the humans settle, all their thoughts and feelings flow back into you. It would be wise to learn as much from these humans as you can. All right, so let's learn about the villages. Click on the village to see the village borders light up beneath. So if we click on the village, that's going to be this light blue, sort of like a cyan coloration. And then it says at each end of the village border is also marked by a bunker or a buoy. So that's this little bunker here. If it actually extended out into the water, you'd see buoys. Placing plants, animals, or minerals within the village's border will generate resources. Villages want to grow using food, wealth, and technology provided to you. Now, something that confused me at first was that the village is going to grow regardless of whether or not they have food. It's just one of the three types of resources that you can use. And generally, you're going to have all three resources in a village, but it's not like the village has a population that has to grow. It's more that you know there's this many food and they're utilizing a certain amount. So that's something neat. You can also tap control to cycle through the additional information about what patches are currently producing what. So let's take a look at that. Right now we can see that this patch here, you know, I made it into a blueberry. It's providing five food. And then the village is getting a total of four out of five, right? So that means that it's currently utilizing four of a potential maximum of five. The further away this number is from the maximum number, the quicker it will bridge the gap. So it's going to take a little while to get from four to five, but it'll get there soon. 
If we press control, we can see that we've got some uh, Natura, which creates synergies. We'll get to that in a minute. We can also see the health of the village is at 25, 4 attack strength. We've got 4 offensive strength, 5 defensive strength. Again, we'll get to that in a little bit. And uh, lastly, we can cycle through just have nothing showing. Blueberries providing 5 food. Village resources can be viewed by selecting the village and viewing the village panel in the upper right corner. Alternatively, you can tap control to see the numbers under the village. You can see how much food is being used. See, I'm, I'm kind of duplicating. Um, how much is being used, the number before the slash, and how much there is available within the borders. So it's only counting food that's within the border. Place some more fruit plants to see how it affects the village. Okay, so now we have 10 food. And it's going to bridge the gap again. You can also see in the village panel these two blueberries are now generating 10 food. This will eventually lead to 10 food being put in use. You can always sp speed things up by adding extra resources. The bigger the difference between the food in use and the food in borders, the faster the food in use will grow. See if you could raise the food above 11. All right, so let's plant, plant one more. Now notice that this doesn't cost anything to do, but it does have a cooldown, 30 seconds. So you're limited by cooldowns. And later on, we have to unlock some, some of these features. I think um, a great way to explain how this game kind of works, it is a strategy game that there's a lot of min-maxing ability, a lot of planning, at times, it feels to me kind of like chess, where you're trying to decide your next move. But at the core of it, it's really more of a puzzler. Because what you're trying to do is build the biggest cities, the biggest populations, and the biggest, you know, best civilizations that you can on a limited amount of space. And so it's about finding the right fit for the right pieces of the puzzle that gives you the most potential stuff. So... That's the, that's it. I, that'd be kind of how I'd summarize it. So we're at 10 out of 15. We need one more, and we'll, we'll move on to the next step. Well done. Yes. The village has started building a granary, and they need your help. Building the granary project has allowed villagers to gain a specialization. To learn about specializations, click on the pro project patch. This special specialization requires minerals to provide its boost. Your giants lack the skills to create these minerals, then the project could help remedy this. Above the specialization tab, you will see the project's objectives. See how, again, it, it's very clear and clean cut and trying to explain this interface to you. This civilization wants to build and maintain a granary. The objective is to have 20 food in use. Currently, it's at 12, so I need to get above 20. Once we get that, then the objective will be complete. We have 999 minutes and 16 seconds remaining to complete this objective. Of course, that's a very large number because it's the tutorial. This project requires a large amount of food. This will be no easy task. Luckily, it seems the ocean giant has now grown stronger. All right, so now he has this spell that will allow us to create domestic animals wants us to use domestic animals in the forest. Let's go over here and we'll put it at the edge. And... Huzzah! Alright. All animals have an area of effect. Click on the animals to view their range. So that's this bar here. So they have a range of two. There are certain synergies that you can use that will increase the range of animals. They also provide four. One is the base, and then they're getting a symbiosis of three. And the first thing you'll notice is that it says symbiosis, free range, plus three food, if a blueberry is within animal range. I have two sets of blueberries next to it, which is how we get from one base, plus the three from symbiosis for a total of four. Four on all of the squares within the range of the animal, and then five on each of the blueberries. That's how those numbers kind of work together. Click on the patch of chickens to view their statistics. Placing chickens near blueberries will create symbiosis. 
all animals, plants, and minerals have a separate symbiosis. See if he can use the symbiosis of the chickens to easily complete the project. Replacing a few blueberries with chickens could provide you with more food. So it's assuming I had kind of filled up the whole map with, uh, with blueberries, which I did not. That would be silly. Now what's interesting is that you cannot place animals and things on the borders. Excuse me, I'm completely wrong. You can't. Certain things, um, in certain circumstances, you cannot place things directly on the borders, but then they still function if they're already there. In this case, apparently, I can put down chickens or animals there. Maybe it was um, something else. Minerals, I think. See if you can use the symbiosis to complete the project. I think we have. Yeah, we're at 21 out of 30. Because of your positive influence, the villagers have decreed their ambassador to join you. The ambassador wishes to climb, climb upon the shoulders of your giants and increase their strength. Welcome, rock giant. He is in need of a new ability. Select the rock giant, use the right mouse button, and press the text button bubble above the ambassador to pick him up. So we can either click on the giant or press 3. We click right click there, it'll pick him up and poof, ends up on his head. He's hidden in the clouds right now. It's moving. See? There he is. You can actually zoom in a little bit and you can see him. It's kind of hard to see from down here, but he's up there. All right. Select the rock giant, and yes, we've done that. The ambassador's spirit has unlocked new abilities within the rock giant. Select the patch with the granary to view the specialization. All right, so if we go to the granary, we can see that now we have this specialization, mushroom eaters, plus 15 food for each mineral within borders. Okay, and it wants us to place some minerals on the right patch to boost the village's resources. So I'm going to take the rock giant now, and we're going to go over here and do precious minerals right next to the granary since we're not using this land yet. Now, because of that specialization, we get an extra 15 food right here just because it has a mineral in the borders of the village. At the same time, even without that symbiosis, this thing creates eight wealth and activates a symbiosis of 10 extra wealth when it's in use. So, oh, excuse me. It activates symbiosis with 10 wealth that's in use. So if I have 10 wealth in use, right now we're at two out of eight, the symbiosis will activate, which gives us 10 extra wealth if it's next to an animal nest. So that's neat. The village has grown and developed greatly since you awakened, but you sense there is still life roaming on the surface hoping to find a place to settle. Raise a desert of ten patches using the rock giant's raised mountain ability. Alright. Let's just send him over here. We don't really need this land. Look at these little guys talking about stuff. Food, apples, a, a jerkin, ale, pears. <laughs> there doesn't seem to be any kind of a cost involved with destroying land, so you can kind of terraform it at your will. Okay, so now we've got a 10 patch thing here. Now we need the ocean giant. We're going to make domestic animals in a large desert. Make sure there's enough desert for the village to settle on. If the village is not settling, there's not enough space, or there are no resources nearby. So no one's going to come and settle here until I actually put down the animals. He's kind of slow. Okay, so now that we have 11 wealth in use, Notice how it says active here. So now the symbiosis is kicked in, and it will provide 10 extra wealth that's next to an animal nest. Unfortunately, I don't have any animals. I, uh, you know, I put the chickens way over here. 
But if I wanted to, I could put some animals right next to it, somehow, if there was enough room. Okay, so here's our water guy. Let's put some animals, say, here. And we should see a settler. There they are. Marvel Path has been settled. Nice. Now they're going to start their project. Soon. There we go. Let's see what it is. So, a shrine is being built by this pious village. That is a typo. It should be built. Being built. Or being builded. But even then it should be built. Click on the project patch and look at it in the right hand corner. This project's specialization generates food for each animal within animal borders. So the objective is we need 10 wealth and 10 food. And they are desert herders, so an extra five food for each animal within borders. So already, those animals I put down are creating one food on each tile, but then also this is giving five food because of the animals. So we'll just put down a little bit more. They do stack. You can have kind of duplicate the range. We also need some wealth, though. Kangaroo rats generate one food for each path in their range. Yep, yep. Seems like this project also requires wealth. Use the rock giant's precious minerals ability within the desert's village borders on a desert patch. Let's get him down here. And, see, I think this is the one you can't actually do right on the thing. Or maybe I'm wrong. Let's find out. Nope, you can. Excellent. So that's uh, technically in the border, I believe. Isn't it? No, it's not. It's got to be within the border. Let's just do it again. As soon as that cooldown's up. We'll put some more animals over here for them. This is what I mean how it's like kind of like a puzzle game. Because placement's very important. Cool down. There we go. Now that little thing was letting me know that I'm going to destroy something that's currently there. Okay. There we go. Now we're at 0 out of 10. We can increase this by making sure the villagers activate the mineral. Activates with 5 wealth in use. Minerals can generate far more races, resources if they're activated. Click on the minerals to view the requirements to be activated. So, in order to activate it again, we just need to have 5 wealth in use. Second quartz might assist us. And it, we already have two because they extended their borders. As the village grows larger, they'll extend their borders. So that one's actually now within range. And now that we're at five, they generate significantly more. Eight each. So it's 18 and 18, up from 10. And we're doing good. Well done. Continue improving this village until it can finish its project. We just need one more wealth. There we go. You have performed admirably. The humans have strengthened your core. You have learned about villages, resources, specializations, and symbioses. Time for slumbers come again. All right, so from here, if you're just playing the game for the first time, it actually will allow you to go and do an era game. That's as far into, as into the tutorial as you have to get. But I do want to do this third beginning, which is the final step of the tutorial. So that's that. Let's play the next one. Welcome to the third era. Hey, that guy looks funny. This is the who's it? What's it now? The swamp swamp giant. Yeah. So we're going to use the swamp and ocean giant to create a swamp of at least fifteen patches. Okay, so we'll take you. We need some water. Let's 
slightly different than a normal forest. And that's 15, so we're good to go. He's gained a new ability. We can do herbs. This creates technology. Let's go, like, say, here. That should prompt some settlement. There they are. The herbs you made produce technology. Banner stone. All right, peppermints you placed. Apparently they ended up being called peppermints. Are providing this village with seven technology. This means technology and use will slowly rise to seven of seven. The spirit of the villagers have allowed you to regain some of your strength. Your ocean giant has gained a new ability. Okay. Now he has the ability to do something called a growth aspect. Aspect abilities allow you to upgrade individual plants, animals, or minerals. Select the growth aspect and cast it on the patch of herbs. Alright, come on over, buddy. We'll use E on the herbs. Those things always remind me of like little mouths. Excellent. You will notice the aspect appearing in the patch panel in the upper right corner. Notice how we've got more bars now that we're into the third one. We'll learn about these in a moment. As you can see, the growth aspect has added extra food in the patch of peppermints. So up here, lesser growth aspect, plus two food, plus one natura, natura. Okay, so that makes it even better than on its own. Before, it was just seven technology. Now, it provides an extra two food and more symbiosis. All giants can have aspect abilities, which can upgrade plants, animals, minerals. You sense there is more. The aspect you placed has kindled a transmutation within the herbs. We can now transmute this into, from a peppermint into a tomato. And then we want to, yes, let's transmute it to a tomato. Click on the patch of herbs and view the patch panel in the upper right corner. Click on the tomato icon to transmute it into tomatoes. We've just done that. It can also be used to transmute plants, animals, minerals into more powerful variants. Don't forget that these tomatoes also have a new symbiosis. So it's different than the peppermint was. They are healthy. Plus 0.5 tech for each one food on this patch. Alright, neat. By using the correct transmutations and symbioses, you can complete projects with these. Fascinating. seems the villagers demand this project to be finished within a certain amount of time. So this, this project is uh, 15 minutes. They want us to make a school. Requires 15 technology in use, 15 food, currently at 7 and 5. So let's uh, see what we can do to help that out. This is where they remind you that you can use space to pause the game if you want to think things through, kind of like chess. Use your giants to complete the project make good use of specialization. So a little bit less specific on how to do it. So this is where we get to kind of experiment a little bit on our own. So I'm going to do, let's see, we've got the, uh, the tomato plant. Let's go ahead and put some more herbs, some peppermint. So this provides seven extra tech for each mineral next to it. Now, I don't have my rock giants. So I can't do any minerals yet. This one likes to have food. Notice how we've got an open aspect slot, so let's do another growth aspect on the tomatoes. That'll help out the symbiosis and get a little bit more tech, as well as food. We've done two lesser growth aspects. Now, my understanding is that you have a 67% chance of doing a, low, a lesser growth aspect and a 33% chance of getting a potent growth aspect. So it's... Uh, Kind of to be expected that we'd get those two. Let's put a growth aspect on this one as well, the peppermints. And you know what would make sense is I'm going to put down another thing of peppermints. And as soon as we do get a rock giant, if I put a mineral right in the middle of these two, both of these will get symbiosis. So let's plan on doing that. In the meantime, we might as well transmute that into a tomato. <coughs> And then do another 
aspect. See, that time we got a potent growth aspect, plus four food, plus two nature up. It's twice as strong. All right, so we've completed the project. You have made great use of symbioses and transmutations. The village's ambassador wishes to stand on the shoulders of your giants. Nice. Hover over the locked abilities in the ability bar to view their unlock requirements. Pick up the ambassador by selecting a giant and clicking on the text bubble. So this time it doesn't tell me which one to do. I can do it with either. Now here's what's neat, is if I am using the shortcut keys, one and two, and I hover over this, you see that little icon? It's letting me know which ability would be unlocked by picking this ambassador up. So I could either have herd aspect, or I could have the toxic aspect. Let's just go toxic, see what happens. <coughs> Completing projects will reward you with ambassadors, who in return will upgrade your giants. Next we're going to learn about prosperity. Prosperity is this number. This is the total amount of food in use, wealth in use, and technology in use for all villages on the planet summed together. You can view this in the upper left corner. See, it's, it's telling us more and more. I like it. Villages also have a village prosperity, which is the total amount of prosperity for the village. Let's see, you have a village prosperity by looking just at the summary here. In order for a new village to settle, you must fill the prosperity bar, which you can view in the upper left corner. That's this thing. So we've got to get to 60 prosperity, and then a new nomad will be generated. Sense a rumble in your, beneath your surface. I bet it's the rock giant. Is it? No, it's the forest giant. That's fine. Use the fruit plant ability in the swamp will result in different plants. Now before we were using them in the forest, let's go ahead and plant, plant some fruit, say, outdoor classes. This gives plus two food and plus two attack for each tomato. Let's see if we can get some tomatoes. Now that's an elderberry. Looks like we need to transmute it into a tomato. And we've just hit 60, so a nomad is about to spawn. It'll require a habitable area with some animals, plants, or mines nearby. Use the forest giant and ocean giant to raise a forest with at least 10 patches. Okay, how about we go over here, and we'll have him, uh, actually, you know what, I want to do some of the other stuff first. In order to do tomatoes, we need a lesser leaf aspect. That's this one. So let's do a leaf aspect. Transmute that to a tomato. That'll help out with the synergy of this school. And now I'm going to send this guy over here to make that forest. Kind of spins a little quick when you're all the way zoomed out. Okay, so he'll go do that. It's temporarily locked, some of the abilities. Toxic aspects. Increases tech. These are all filled. Oh, that one's not the to toxic aspect on this one. So we have a lesser toxic, toxic aspect, an extra three tech. All right. Swamp Giant has unlocked the exotic animals ability. Exotic animals ability of the swamp giant in the forest to create animals. All right. Sounds like it wants me to focus over here more. Let's bring everyone over here. And it wants me to do this exotic animals button. These ones create wealth, while the forest giant, no, the water, is it called the water giant? Ocean giant is the one that does domestic animals. So we're going to do exotic animals. Let's do them, say, here. No, here. It's a stoat. The Swamp Giant has unlocked the exotic... Yes, we've just read that. Well done, you've created stoats. There's some people. Mm, new village has spawned. It's called Lameport. <laughs> That's funny. 
They have a, symbi a new symbiosis. Select the stoats to view their symbiosis. Okay. Where are they? Right here? Look at that little guy. You can see him right there. Alright, so the stoats. Royal fur. Plus two wealth if there's a mineral within animal range. They have a range of two. So it wants me to put minerals somewhere in their range. Sense a rumble beneath your surface. That's what I was waiting for. We need that rock man. Come on, rock giant. Use the rock giant to create symbiosis for the stoats. Okay, so the stilts are right there. Let's go ahead and put precious minerals right next to them. Stoats and a gate work well together thanks to their symbiosis. See, this one gives shelter plus 10 wealth if next to an animal nest. And this gives plus 2 wealth if there's minerals. So they work both, both benefit from each other. You remember blueberries working well with the chickens. Blueberries also have a symbiosis which work well with other plants. Use the fruit plant ability of your forest giant to create some blueberries in the forest. Alright. So you're gonna plant some fruit. See so like right there. Select the blueberry and check the symbiosis and transmutations tabs. This gives plus ten food if it's next to an apple tree, dandelion, or strawberry. And we can upgrade a blueberry into a strawberry if we use a lesser leaf aspect on it. So let's do that. Uh, let's go E, put the aspect. Make it into a strawberry. And in just a moment, I'm going to plant some more fruit. So now we've got strawberries with a potent aspect. And we've got blueberries. So the blueberry gives plus 10 if it's next to a strawberry. That's why it's at 15. And this one gets plus 3 if it's next to a blueberry or strawberry. So again, they work well together. Blueberries can transmute. Yes, we've done that. Yep, yep. Before you continue, don't forget that you can always tap spacebar to pause the game. Hopefully it's in just, yeah, it looks like it just deleted my thing. <laughs> I, I did it too close to that. we'll still be able to get the symbioses we're looking for. This one is actually outside the range of the village, so I'm going to leave this one as uh, this one on the inside of the village with the potent aspect as blueberries. And I'll upgrade this one to strawberries so that this one on the inside has the bigger bonus. Okay, so it wants us to complete this objective this challenge. I want us to make a shrine and we have 19 minutes. We need to have 20, we need 15 wealth of which we have 22. By the way, this little indicator here, this is a countdown. It's showing you that this decreases. It's a visual indicator as well as the timer. We just need to get to 15 food in use. So I need more food in the village. Let's use the growth aspect on some of this. Eventually I expect them to ex increase their borders. This can only work on plants. So what can we do to increase food? That's unused. I could just plant some more plants. Sure, let's just do domestic animals. So we have the stoats, which were the non-domesticated animals, and now we have chickens. It's just stoats and chickens. Hopefully they don't hurt each other. And I can plant, uh, what kind of symbiosis or what kind of aspects can I put on it? Most of the symbioses or aspects I can use right now only work on plants. So that's a little bit of food. Oh, excellent. We've completed it. Your specialization has caused the village to become extremely prosperous. Witness how the resources are growing. So notice how this thing gives 140 uh, 
science, or technology. As a result of their huge growth, your village has become extremely greedy. Be sure to tap space so you can pause and see what's happening. Select the village and view the village panel to see how much greed your village has. Okay. A lot. Greed of village. The more greedy red faces, the greedier this village is. Greedy villages may cause mischief. It's at war with Bannerstone. It's over here. Gotta unpause in order to do next. Witness how the village falls into complete chaos. Out of curiosity, this one was uh, Specialization Greed Express, 140 just for having 5 tech. 5 plus 5 tech for each single food within borders. Wow. No wonder it's so, uh, so much. Now the way Greed works is the... If the difference between a resource and the resource in use is smaller than 20 plus your awe score, which is something we haven't really covered yet, um, then it creates greed. So you kind of have to grow the village at a certain pace or instigate some other things to prevent greed, either by using awe or making hostile creatures to help keep the humans calm. Right, so this new village is being is beyond saving. Destroy them. Use your rock giant or swamp giant's attack abilities to destroy the village. Alright, so swamp giant is number two. We can use a muck bomb. Let's do that. Muck bomb. That's causing damage to the building. Let's use the rock giant also. He can do an earthquake. going to die. There we go. Landport has been destroyed. Stupid humans. Okay. Well done. One village stood tall and strong while the other's greed led it to its own destruction. Achieve new developments by having the villages develop in different directions. In doing so, you will unlock new plants, animals, minerals, and projects. Maybe one day the humans will be able to take care of you while you slumber. So since it's a tutorial, we didn't really get to unlock anything. But now we have the ability to go and start a new era. And that's kind of where puzzle mode begins. So you play through and you just kind of try to achieve some of, the, some of these unlockable things, which increase the complication of the game and how much synergy there is. And you kind of puzzle your way through until you can get the biggest cities and civilizations possible. So that's my sort of first look, first review of the game. Uh, I am going to continue to play. In the next video, I'm going to start doing some Let's Plays. I'm just going to experimenting with this, see how far we can get along. But um, I'm going to wrap this one up here as a first impressions type video. Thank you so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you again in the next video. See you soon.